Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Dave's Acrylic Boring. I'm Dave. Uh, today we're going to be doing some science. This is a tutorial about um, what are we putting on our paints? Um, do, you, do we really know? Uh, and I know we, we've followed all these videos that are online and everything, and um, they tell us, okay, well, you mix this with this and this and this. But why? Why are we doing this? All right, now what I've done here is I have put down. Um, some different pouring mediums on this piece of clear plastic here and I'm going to put it on this gray back so you can see it a little bit better but I've got the, G the Golden GAC 800 the Floetrol, Elmer's Glue Wall and Liquitex pouring medium okay and that shows you what happens to your pouring mediums when you add them to your um, paints um, your GAC 800 and your Liquitex are almost completely transparent. Your glue wall has a little bit of opaqueness to it and so does your flow troll, but not much. Most of it is very transparent. Um, so, I mean, th these are our pouring mediums that we use quite a bit in, in our artwork, but um, I'm going to break them down in, in, into each one. So, I mean, what, what are these? So, let's go with this. Let's start with the Golden uh, GAC 800 here. Okay, what is Golden GAC 800? I mean, people people ask me that, you know, why do I use that or whatever. Um, uh, Golden GAC 800 is a 100% uh, acrylic pouring medium that is transparent when cured, and I showed you that right there. Why I put a little bit on that pe uh, piece of plastic there. Um, it is a low crazing extender for pouring acrylic artwork um, for colors. Um, it it reduces, but it doesn't eliminate crazing and paints that it's added to. Um, so it's, a, it's actually be very beneficial when you're pouring to use something that has a, an anti-crazing um, compound in it. Um, this, this Golden product is, uh, is an American-made company. They are located in uh, New Berlin, New York. And uh, a few things about this product here, um, according to their label, um, there are no known health hazards to this uh, as anticipated use, as in mixing with your colors or whatever. I mean, obviously, avoid inhalation, extended uh, um, prolonged inhalation of the sanding dust if you're going to sand on it, um, the prolonged vapors, or if you um, water it down, you're using it in, in like a spray mist or whatever like that. Uh, obviously, don't ingest it. Um, or um, have it on your skin for a very long time. So basically, don't try to take a bath in the stuff and uh, don't try to use it on your salad. <laughs> so that's the GAC 800. Okay, now on my next one is it's the Flood Flow Troll. Okay, Flood Flow Troll. Um, this is a paint additive that improves the performance of uh, latex and acrylic paints and reduces the appearance of like brush marks um, or unlevel paints as you're painting. It just basically creates a smoother surface. This is actually not a pouring medium. It was just what we use to condition our paint to create that smoother look. Um, now in a pinch you can substitute this flood flow troll with Elmer's glue wall. Um, and this is you know if this is not available whatever. Uh, I like to use both in mine, so um, that's what that is. So, all right. Um, now this flood flow troll uh, comes in two different kinds um, that I'm aware of. Um, you have the U.S. based flood flow troll, which is a latex-based paint additive, whereas the uh, Australian flow troll uh, it says right on the label that it is a paint and a Acrylic, or it's an acrylic paint and stain conditioner, so it's a little bit different. Um, a lot of people use that uh, Australian Floetrol to create those shelly blooms that are really, really uh, spectacular. Uh, now you can uh, replicate, and I use that word loosely, but you can replicate the uh, shelly blooms with American Floetrol by adding um, a Minwax wood conditioner, a few drops in each of your colors or whatever, um, to mimic 
that Australian flow trawl look that uh, so many people out there are getting. So with this here, um, the only health hazards that were listed on this um, are inhalation hazards for lung exposures, um, the dust and spray if you're going to sand on it, uh, for particulates or if you're going to spray it, you know, if you put it in a, a sprayer to, to the spray mist. Um, ingestion hazard, don't drink this stuff, obviously. Um, eye irritant and uh, possible skin irritant. So make sure if you get it on you, uh, after a while, you know, rinse it off if you're sensitive to it or after a while just make sure you keep your hands nice and clean. Alright, we're two down, two down. Alright, the next one on that is the glue wall. And the glue wall is the most opaque out of all of these. Now, pardon my uh, air bubbles in here. I did not pop the air bubbles when I put this on here. I don't know why I didn't do that, but Elmer's glue wall. Okay, now this has been a conundrum of mine since the beginning. Um, I started out using Elmer's school glue, but what I found out through research is that uh, the difference between the Elmer School Glue and the Glue All is the Glue All is a permanent glue, whereas the uh, School Glue um, can be softened with water. So if you are planning to do any kind of resin work uh, later on where you have to wash your painting, if you have used Elmer School Glue, you might run into a little bit of a problem. I'm not saying you will, but you might run into a little bit of a problem with the colors that you use with the Elmer's School Glue. So keep that in mind, Elmer's Glue All is a better alternative than the School Glue when it comes to any of your artwork that you're going to be uh, resining. Now I've had questions before from people where they ask me like, oh, well, what's the difference, can I use clear glue? I mean clear glue is the same, it's Elmer's Glue, can I use clear glue? The difference in between the white glue and the uh, the clear glue is that the white glue is water based whereas the clear glue is solvent based and when we're mixing all this stuff together you know your flood flow trawl your GAC 800s your Liquitex pouring mediums um, your other kinds of glue or whatever when you're adding this stuff to paints you remember there are the paint itself has pigments and, and dyes and things like that in it how every, everything that we add to that has a different reaction so uh, if you're going to be adding something that has that is based on solvents that might interfere with the pigmentation of the paint so I would not recommend using clear glue I I've never used it but I wouldn't recommend it just because of the fact that it's made it's, it's solvent based versus water based um, if you have ever used the clear base and you've had great results I mean feel free to comment you know I, I'd love to get all your feedback um, but as for myself, I've only used the white glue. All right, now we're on to our last. Uh, this is the Liquitex pouring medium, and this one is in gloss. All right, this is the acrylic pouring medium that increases flow, reduces crazing, and this has a high gloss finish. Um, it dries, uh, and I didn't let this Liquitex, this uh, made this up about three days ago, so that it hasn't completely completely 100% cured, but if you can see right around the edges, the edges are almost crystal clear. So the middle still has a little bit of uh, opaqueness to it, if you will, but it's not completely cured. So remember that when you are um, putting your paintings up and everything, that these additives, these things that we're putting in our paints, take a little while longer to cure. Now granted, this is a small puddle versus mixing it in with paint, but these things take a little bit longer to cure than just drying your paint time, okay? Um, so be mindful of that. If you're going to resin, you want to wait, you know, at least two weeks before you start washing your uh, paintings down and uh, resining them or glossing and stuff like that. All right, so going on to this. Like I said, this is, it increases flow, reduces crazing, it's a high gloss finish. Um, Liquitex is made in France, but there is an American ad address in uh, Piscataway, New Jersey. Um, and this is um, definitely one of my favorite pouring mediums. It is a little bit uh, on the pricey side. This is about $16 uh, from where I get it for a 16 fluid ounce. Um, your Elmer School Glue, 
that's about $15 for a gallon of this. Uh, the flood flow troll, uh, this one's about $15 for a gallon of it. And the, by far the most expensive is the GAC 800. This is a eight fluid ounce, and this is around $16. So these pouring mediums, um, you know, I, I use uh, at least three of these in my uh, Dutch pour, uh, when I make my paint for my Dutch pours, uh, in my, my base, my, my pillow paint, if you will. Um, but I don't use a, a whole lot. I, I do have a, another video that uh, explains how I do that, if you want to check that out. So, uh, this has been a, a, my science experiment for as far as uh, getting information on what we are putting on our paints. So I hope you were uh, uh, informed on you know, these different products or whatever. I hope this helps um, to create beautiful works. So don't forget, um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't uh, already, and remember, pour on.